Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Tanks. And let's get right to the news. Alright, we have an Ahsoka article, which I didn't know if we'd be saying anytime soon. Let me guess it's an interview from Before the Strike. Yes, but <laughs> to be fair, the, a lot of them do interviews yeah, they, in advance and roll them out gradually. Yeah, they do a bulk interview mm-hmm. and uh, roll pieces as it gets closer. How many times are they going to get that actor or actress in and makes good sense. Yeah, yeah it does. All right, this one comes to us from Entertainment Weekly. They also have some beautiful high-res images, which will be being displayed while we talk about the article. Cool. Yeah, you don't get to see them. No, I won't get this because I won't be editing (laughs) this one. I've been editing videos for the last few days, so if the quality has gone down... It's his fault. Yeah, I was responsible for the Ahsoka (laughs) hype train yesterday. I haven't seen it. I sent it to you. Oh, you just... (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I did it for you because I knew that is exactly what you would do. It is. Well, you haven't seen it. How do you know? Did you see it or did you not it's see it? It's what you sent me, so... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That was that was it. There wasn't any like more to it. There wasn't like cool animation or anything. Oh, novice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, it's been 15 years since Ahsoka yeah. came to I, Star Wars. I remember. 2008 animated film, The Clone Wars, voiced by Ashley Eckstein. I remember going to the theater and walking out being like, huh, all right. Well, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't great. <laughs> but it got better. It got much, much better, yes. So did the character of Ahsoka. Absolutely. She grew on you. Lucasfilm head of development, Carrie Beck. She's also the executive producer on Ahsoka, co-producer of Mandalorian, and Book of Boba Fett, and Skeleton Crew. She says, there's always been a big open question. We don't see her in the original trilogy. We don't see her in the sequel trilogy. What did she end up doing? That's a good dang question. Maybe she just like found an island. Just no. Just kind of hung out there and said, She, she let Luke have his own island. She was done with him. She's like, I'm not dealing with that self pity stuff. I've got things to do. <laughs> well, she, she does disappear for a while. She does. But in a way, she has to because, as I've mentioned before, with the world between worlds and the trickiness, she can't just immediately emerge mm-hmm. because Ezra needs to think she's still dead. Because Ezra can't know she's alive oh, before what, yeah. he goes into the world between worlds. So she cannot see him because that yeah. would create another paradox. It would create a... It, technically, it would be... I don't know if that would be the paradox, but I mean, as I've said before... would he ever go to save her if he knew? Well, yeah. I mean, would he know to take her out unless she specifically told him? And then he would have already known. Well, it's, and then it's, it's, it's tricky. he might find out about Kanan's death. And yeah. the future gets wonky if you go back in time and that's, try and tell somebody things. Yeah, that's the problem with it. She kind of had to take herself off the board, I think, because she was afraid of what would happen if she reemerged after what she knew had happened, but what Ezra doesn't know for a couple of years yet. That kind of talks about how they don't just mean that the visual effects, you know, took a while to develop so that we could actually bring Ahsoka in live action out there to the screen. She's, but they had the prosthetics they had to get ready. And then how do they have a lead actress that can actually sit in a makeup chair for hours every day? Turns out the answer is Rosario Dawson, as we all know. Rosario has told and retold on countless talk shows how she became a Star Wars fan, of especially of Ahsoka, through the Clone Wars. And in 2017, that's when Boss Logic shared that infamous fan art imagining Rosario Dawson in the role, which then she retweeted, which caught the attention of Filoni. And then years later, when the production of Mandalorian started up, she got the call. Fan casting. It's a thing. Sometimes it works. Is it going to work with Keanu Reeves and Revan? We're not talking about that. That's a story for another time. Well, we've already talked about that one, haven't we? That he is going to be in the Acolyte? Yeah, we haven't. We haven't? No. I have. Entertainment Weekly says, speaking to Rosario about Ahsoka is like talking to a human Wikipedia article come to life because she references Ahsoka-specific journey moments episode by episode from Clone Wars. She talks about the animated anthology, the tales of the Jedi. She even speaks of Eckstein's voice acting performances with a reverence. She said one of her favorite days was when Ashley came to visit the set. Or film something. It's what we're hoping. (laughs) Who knows if it's true. It's true. Come on. But that's what we're hoping. She can deny it all she wants. We know at the end of the animated series that we had Ahsoka the White. That's what we yes. all have called her. The first time we saw her after she came back from the world between worlds. Rosario says, in the animation, you saw her go to the white. But what I loved is this idea that there was even another level to her. Like Dave and I, gray? 
Dave and I talked about Gandalf the Grey and Gandalf the White, <laughs> talking about that transition and how she's someone very capable and excellent and looked up to as a leader, but she still has levels of development to go. She's going beyond Gandalf the White. There is no beyond Gandalf the White. Not yet, because we haven't seen it. But no, there, there's no need. Many of Ahsoka's moves from the Clone Wars and Rebels are pretty... Uh, acrobatic? Acrobatic, nearly impossible for a human to do. Nearly? And Dawson trained to the nines. She even had to learn to be kind of ambidextrous because Ahsoka is ambidextrous. Yeah. That had to be a challenge. I can't imagine it. Well, I can't do anything with my left hand, no. What's funny is what Natasha Louis Bodizo, who plays Sabine, had to say about her. She said, I don't have a single memory of Rosario looking tired, which is crazy considering we're on the same schedule. On the weekends, she's always doing work for charities that she's passionate about and flying off and doing speeches at events. And I'm just in bed and I'm still tired. Well, you know, Ahsoka the White. <laughs> Gotta... Gotta go you know, for she got that. There's no tired. No. She took a nap while she was waiting to come back from the dead. That was in air quotes because she wasn't really dead. No. <laughs> What's interesting is they say when the series begins, Ahsoka is lonely. She's cross paths with other Force users like Grogu and Luke, but Dawson describes her kind of as a lone wolf, a Ronin like wanderer committed to a single goal, hunting down Thrawn for clues to help her find her missing friend, Ezra Bridger. It's a vow she made in the Rebel season finale, and in Ahsoka, her journey continues. She didn't make it in the season finale. She made what? it in the World Between Worlds episodes. This article is trash. You're right. <laughs> <sighs> but it's a vow she made. Yes. Maybe she. Maybe you just didn't hear her. Maybe she made that vow to Sabine. Well, I mean, it's implied that she's going to carry it out, yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what happens in the final episode, but she mm -hmm. doesn't make the vow there. While Sabine is an accomplished fighter... Ahsoka does find her, like, picking up Ezra's old green lightsaber, and the actress spent months training to learn how to wield the blade. She says, sometimes you do stunts and projects, and it feels very performative, or more like it's for the fun of the action, which is fine. But every action scene in our show is very, very parallel to the story. Every move is thought out to where you would comment that a certain move did or didn't feel like Sabine. Everything is intentional, and I hope that shows on screen. I hope so, too. Yeah. We were promised amazing fights. That was the promise. We were promised. That was the vow they made to us. Yes. We're going to get to see... Hopefully, I get to see, we get to see another battle with Morgan Elsbeth, because... Well, it, I think she's a night sister, which kind of explains mm -hmm. maybe why she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ahsoka, too, right? Where did she get her skills to kind of well, match with the Jedi? <laughs> What's funny is the actress who actually plays Morgan Elsbeth, she's the daughter of a martial arts legend... Dan in Santo, in the goddaughter of Bruce Lee. Never heard of him. No, never. No. Never, never heard Does he have anything to do with martial arts or anything? Uh, so then when she got the chance to come back to do even more Star Wars, she was super excited. She found inspiration for Morgan Elspeth's imposing stature in historical leaders, like uh, Julius Caesar and Catherine the Great. Hmm. Which explains a lot. She does have a very regal... Yeah. Miss Newer. Maybe she was a higher honcho in the Night Sister hierarchy, for all we know. Maybe. Maybe. Up there with Mother Towson. Up there. <laughs> Old Daga. She says as a young girl, her father took her and a group of martial arts students to see the original Star Wars, and when they got home from the theater, he immediately ran out to buy some plastic lightsabers for training. A whole bunch of little Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I love the irony that he was training me with these double staff plastic lightsabers, and who knew that down the road I would actually be doing this fight scene with Rosario? Maybe the Force really is out there. <laughs> we all have a destiny if we choose to follow it. <laughs> Our destiny was always to fight Ahsoka. Hmm. Always to battle. <laughs> we also got to hear a little bit from Lars Mikkelsen, of course, reprising his role from Rebels, playing Thrawn, ruthless Imperial officer with a streak of nobility to him, some might say. That's one way to describe him. Well, he's very calculating. He's always very, like, he treats his enemies with respect. It's very interesting. You know, he's one of those villains that you're just like, ooh, something interesting. Is he a villain? Is he? Well, according to most of the galaxy, maybe. Not most of the galaxy. <laughs> some, uh, some see him as a hero. Some do see him as a hero. Back home, they do. Mm. 
Lars Mikkelsen, though, says he's brutal to a certain point, but he's not stupid. He utilizes the creativity around him, and I like that. He doesn't just kill people off for the fun of it. He's sort of a seven pages ahead of everybody else. Or more, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he needs to be. Yeah, he's playing 4D chess, everybody else is playing checkers. <laughs> but he's not just smart. We know that he, like, studies combat and everything, too. Yeah. So he's not just uh, the brains. He's also got some brawn to him. A little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was funny because he assumed when Rebels finished that he was done, that it was all over. But then he also thought it was interesting that Filoni kind of made a, well, let's see, kind of cryptic ending with the whole thing when they were finishing shooting Rebels. Like, well, yeah. maybe, maybe we'll see you again sometime. Well, he had a figure, right? He gets carted off with the hero of the show. <laughs> like, kind of implies you might get a continuation, a to-be-continued attached mm-hmm. to it. And lastly, Beck had something to say about the comments we've been hearing. Some people say we need to watch Rebels episodes. Some oh, people we say go. we do not. She's going to weigh in too. Beck says that's been the challenge of the series. But Dave was very thoughtful about crafting the narrative in a way that could invite people in. The show tells them everything they need to know along the way. We shall see. We shall see. And if they don't, I hope we told you ahead of time. <laughs> in Path to Ahsoka. Yes, every Friday. Sometimes. It's Thursday. It's supposed to be Thursday. It's never a Thursday. Oh, I'm going to get it on a Thursday, and you're going to be like, what? It's going to happen. You don't have that many left. I, I know. You give like two, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I even, one. I, I don't even know. I have a, I have an actual couple. Oh. Yeah. I it's still a have Ahsoka path. on the uh, back well, there. That is, yeah, that's simmering quite a bit back there. Time so. has been an issue, and she deserves more of my time than I've been able to give. Hmm. She would agree. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. <laughs> A new one is going to be recorded very soon. Oh, is it? Yeah, like, we're going to record it right after this, and we'll see how long <laughs> it takes me to get it edited. Maybe I'll finally make a Thursday. We'll see. Um, it is Thursday. Dang it! You missed it. It's going to be for Friday, then. Yeah. All right. All right, well, that's all we got for you this time, so now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think of any and all of today's news, and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>